News 25 is brought to you by Golden Casino Group, where you'll always find great fun, good food, and fantastic entertainment, all at Gold Town, Lakeside, and the Pahrump Nugget. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, a major collision blocks an intersection and a water line breaks following the California quake. News 25 starts now. This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Three people are transported from the scene to our local hospital. It's Friday, July 5th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, a freak accident happened yesterday afternoon after loved ones were doing their best to help a local woman get emergency medical care when an accident occurred. It was an unusual dispatch. We got the page for a two-vehicle accident. There was a caveat that there was possibly one person who was overdosing and possibly may not be breathing. So we sent additional resources on initial response. We did, upon arrival, find the report of a two-vehicle accident to be accurate. There was also a sheriff's office uh, who is on location. We're performing life-saving measures, including administration of Narcan and possibly a round of CPR. EMS crews took over and transported that patient to the local hospital, while additional crews were focusing on the uh, injured parties from the two-vehicle accident. The sheriff's office was continuing our investigation, but we transported one from a medical standpoint, and then two were transported as a result of the motor vehicle accident and the impact. There was one party transported per vehicle. And so, um, do you know how the accident occurred at this point? The sheriff's office is investigating? They were investigating, so I don't know the, the complete story as far as how the impact occurred, but it was a substantial one. There was uh, damage to both vehicles that was consistent with uh, getting those people over to the hospital. Well, did you feel that? That was the big question here in Nevada yesterday following an earthquake that ravaged a rural town in Southern California. The 6.4 quake and hundreds of subsequent acts their shocks reminded residents to be prepared for emergencies. We were actually in station. Uh, personnel felt the earthquake occur. And of course, we went right to our resources and found that it was actually registered as a 6.4 in Ridgecrest area, California, as most people are aware of. Uh, we can checked on with our local resources and our infrastructure. And we found the sheriff's office was mostly intact with no issues. However, they did find some possible evidence of some cracking surfaces. We found, we received reports of uh, cracked stucco, cracked drywall, and then possibly a water uh, main break. Now, all in all, we came through it pretty clean. Uh, it was a, a rolling sensation as far as the, uh, the impact, and um, there have been some aftershocks. I don't, I'm not aware of any that have been felt here in Pahrump, but we're continuing to monitor from a DEM standpoint through the next week. Uh, again, the, the considerations for the infrastructure, everything appears to be intact throughout the county. And Beehive Home staff are on fire watch over the weekend after a water main broke outside the facility yesterday afternoon. There was a substantial water main break. As we were responding to a two vehicle accident, we came across the water going over the road surface on Dandelion. Uh, we noticed that Great Basin was on location. They were working to shut off that water. Uh, apparently, the uh, water main for the fire suppression system on one of the commercial structures there had ruptured. It's unknown, but it's a possibility that was related to the earthquake that had occurred earlier in the day. That line was subsequently shut down. The domestic source of water to that building remained in service, but it was just the fire suppression service, and therefore the uh, fire watch was posted with their staff. Basically, they're responsible, for, instead of relying on the system to alert them to a potential problem, they have to continually monitor, do walkthroughs, make sure there's no evidence of smoke or fire. And if so, they don't rely on the system, they call direct. There is still some water over the roadway, and it'll subside over a period of time with the hot days, of course, and um, that system is supposed to be restored Monday with the acquisition of parts. Well, last night's spectacular fireworks show was a bit longer than usual at our local park. 
Locally, Petrick Park was filled to the brim on the A, B, and C fields to view the annual fireworks show brought to us by Zambelli Fireworks. John and Eddie O'Brien, a father and son team, put the display together along with the music, which was accompanied on Ace Country Radio 103.1 FM. The show lasted 29 minutes and 18 seconds with almost a three-minute finale. As usual, Zambelli fireworks wooed the crowd, who pulled up blankets and chairs with family and friends enjoying their Independence Day. More news, including our Independence Day parade, right after this break. News 25 is brought to you by ABB Roofing, proudly serving Pahrump since 1994. At ABB Roofing, we've got you covered. Well, the VFW Post has taken over the annual Independence Day Parade. We caught up with Linda Wright in the Calvada Eye shortly after the awards were handed out. We had our annual 4th of July Parade here at the Calvada Eye, and it was great. We had over 20 participants, including the Sheriff's Department, SARS, and Prump Valley Fire and Rescue, and we had a wonderful turnout and we, the eye was just filled with spectators, and it was just great. We are the actual sponsors of the 4th of July Parade now fully. We plan on making it bigger and better starting next year, and uh, hopefully we'll get more entries into the parade, and we're looking for a band for next year to come. So if you're a band out there, contact me yeah. for next year, because we'd love to have you in our parade and uh, we just love to see you out here for next year. We'd love to have the high school band out. So they can contact me at 775-419-7857, and I'm Linda Wright, and I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions that you have or call the VFW Post. We uh, judge in five different categories. We have um, judges to choice, we have family friendly, we have most enthusiastic, we have uh, most patriotic, all sorts of things, and uh, so, and we judge the entire parade, not just the uh, floats. Wonderful. So if you have a truck that you're entering or an old car, and you decorate it, you're judged. And before we have the breakfast, starting between six and seven a.m., and that's five dollars. It's very reasonable, and that's pancakes and sausage. Thank so you. come on down. And police say that a gun went off inside a hotel room yesterday at the Prompt Nugget. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies are investigating what appears to be an accidental discharge of a firearm that occurred yesterday afternoon at the Pahrump Nugget. The gun allegedly fired one round in a hotel room. The bullet appears to have struck a vehicle outside in the parking lot area. No injuries were reported. And eight people today have been injured in what campus police at the University of Nevada, Reno, are saying is a major utility problem. An explosion today on the campus tore apart part of a building and closed down part of the campus. Emergency responders are investigating the incident between 9th Street and College Drive. Agenta and Nye Halls are closed. Reports are that the injuries sustained are minor. Well, the county has installed new traffic control devices throughout the town to hopefully cut down on injury accidents. Uh, we're putting up stop signs at this corner, um, Homestead and Vance. It's going to be an all-way stop now. Uh, Public Works put out the signs a couple weeks ago. We've been promoting it on the county's Facebook and the town of Pahrump and just trying to get the word out that these are coming to not only this intersection, but they're also doing Wilson and Lola, and they did Blag and Mesquite already. Part of this whole process was doing a study for these uh, intersections to justify whether they do need or don't need stop signs. And one of the numbers that we looked at were numbers that were provided by the Sheriff's Office. Since 2016, there have been 13 impacts at this section when the study was done in mid-May, eight involving injuries. Unfortunately, we also had another accident just, I believe, Saturday night, early Sunday morning, where a car came through the stop sign and hit a motorcycle 
at um, this corner, sending two people life flighted to the hospital. They have looked as this valley grows, this intersection becomes busier and busier, and it is 45 miles an hour. When they were out here doing, uh, Charles Abbott, our friends at Charles Abbott did speed studies out here. People coming down here 50, 55 miles an hour. So it's just to slow people down, to make them more aware of this intersection and the traffic and just make it safer for everybody. There will be uh, putting rumble strips down uh, every 100 feet leading up to the sign. Because studies show they need about 400, 425 feet when going the speeds that are set here to slow down for the stop sign and make people aware. So when will these uh, stop signs go up at Wilson and Lowell? They're being put up as we speak. There's another crew over there right now putting them up. We're always looking at high intersections, high traffic, especially as the side of the valley grows. I think one of the big uh, pluses is definitely this stopping, this flashing light, because that seems to have helped quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. It brings awareness. You can see it farther out. Much more news right after this break. News 25 is brought to you by Bill and Robin Law, injury attorneys. Injured? Need money? Get Bill and Robin, your local Pahrump injury attorneys. Well, right before the break, we were talking about some of the new stop signs. Tim Dahl from the Nye County Public Works spoke to county commissioners to give an update on the current road improvements. At the most recent Board of County Commissioners meeting, Tim Dahl with Public Works gave the road report, which included the maintenance, patching, sweeping, mowing, and more of our roads. Commissioner Cox asks if Tim can have someone from his staff take care of the weeds on Homestead and Mance if he doesn't already have someone working on it. Y yes, we have. Uh, I have prioritized our mowing crew to do just that to focus on the intersections, uh, making sure that those intersections site visibility is adequate for seeing in those intersections. And just so you know, that was not the cause of the accident there. Yeah, I don't believe it was. Um, it was just that during, during the um, Facebook talks about the accident, there were people that made comments that said they were having a hard time seeing around that corner and that we needed to do something about it. So I just thought I would bring that to you before we do have an accident because of it. <laughs> Commissioner Koenig makes a request for someone to check up on the signal timing on 372 and 160. Tim responds saying that we can and that he knows that that is a frustrating intersection. I know that's a frustrating intersection for <laughs> uh, emergency vehicles to get through too. I've I've oftentimes seen emergency vehicles, whether it's an ambulance or a fire truck, shut off their sirens and their lights because yep. it is so congested that they Yo, can't. No one knows what to do when they're behind yeah. us. They, yep. You can't move right, you can't move left, you're just sitting there knowing knowing someone's dying or some house is burning down and there's nowhere for these guys to go. So Commissioner Blundo asks where we are at with the stop sign project. Tim Dahl states that the four-way stop signs at Mance and Homestead were installed. He also states that Wilson and Lola should also be installed as well. He also states that Mesquite and Blagg's four-way stop signs were already put up. Those are the three intersections that we uh, have, or if, if it hasn't already been done, is in the um, being done, installed those traffic stop signs there. Commissioner Koenig requests that the Nevada Department of Transportation take back Bell Vista. It's a, it's a highway. It used to be owned by the state. It was turned over to us. We took it. But it connects 160 with what's the California 37 well, row? That's yeah. not you know, no. California something, but One, 127. 127. It's a major route to get to um, Death Valley. Death Valley. And it's deteriorating. It's 26 miles long. 26 from miles. Bell Vista to State. Nye County absolutely can't afford to keep it in the shape it should be kept in. We patch it here, there. It washed out. We fixed it. But I really would like you guys to consider taking it back. 
Okay. And, and if, if nothing else... I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing smiles. <laughs> if, if nothing else, when the NFLAP projects are announced later this year, if we could get NDOT support to, uh, to, to help get a grant for rehabilitating that road, that, that would that be greatly appreciated as well. So if we could work together on it, it would be appreciated. Thank you, Commissioner Blundo. I'm done. My pleasure. Well, what's better than this? You can get your car washed this Saturday and help out kids in our area with back-to-school supplies. News 25 spoke to two students offering a donation-only car wash this weekend at the local tractor supply on Highway 372. So it's going to be um, about all the teens in Prump area getting together and just giving back to the community and just like a big like hangout for some, all of them to do in the summertime because there's not much to do. So just something they can get out of their house and have a social time with everybody and give back to the community at the same time. Well, it's not all donations, but if they, we do get donations, then all of that will go to school supplies for those in need and Key Club is gonna help us with that part of it yeah. more, so. Yeah. So tell me about who, who are you looking to help up wash cars with you? Just teenagers, like anyone really that is able to come and help us. Yeah, yeah, a lot of like our friends and like people that we go to school with and like um, people we hang around a lot with are going to come and help. We have like the buckets, the hose, the towels, the sponges, yeah. all that good stuff. It's going to be at Chapter Supply and it starts from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on July 6th. They can come really at any time between those times. At the same time, there's going to be a farmer's market at Tractor Supply. So I think, I don't know what time theirs is at, but I know it ends around 12. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's from 7 to 12. And there, it's good. So you can either go there or to our car wash or both. And if they don't have time to get their car washed, they can just drop off a little bit of cash for these donations? Of course, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. The number is 702-817-3707, and you can call me if you have any questions about anything, All right. and I can answer them for you. We'll see you down there. Wear your sunscreen. Yes, yes wear your sunscreen. <laughs> News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, let's take a look outside and see how much uh, sunscreen we're going to need after this break with Michael Donahue. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue with today's temperatures. In Las Vegas, we had a high of 103 degrees and a low of 77. Death Valley, a high of 112 and a low of 81. A high of 101 and a low of 68 in Amargosa. 96, 63 in Beatty. 87, 54 in Goldfield. 86, 54 in Tonopah. Carson City at 89, 53. Fallon at 92, 56. And finally, Fernley with a high of 91 and a low of 58 degrees. Now today in Pahrump, we saw mostly sunny skies. Our high today was 99 degrees with winds coming out of the southwest at 7 miles per hour, 10% for our humidity, and our sunrise at 531 this morning. Now tonight, uh, it's currently 97 degrees outside with clear skies. Our low tonight is going to be 72 degrees with 7 mile per hour winds out of the southeast, humidity at 14%, and our sunset at 8.04 p.m. But looking ahead to our seven day, all week long, we're just going to be seeing some nice open sunny skies. We're going to see some mostly sunny skies on Sunday, but other than that, really just some nice open sunny skies. Now for high temperatures, on Saturday, we're going to be seeing a high of 100 degrees on 97, uh, 97 on Sunday. On Monday, we're going to drop just a little bit to a high of 93. Tuesday, back up to 97. And then Wednesday, we're going to enter a slew of 100 degree temperatures. On Wednesday, we're going to see a high of 101 degrees. On Thursday, up to 103. And by next Friday, we're going to be seeing highs of 106 degrees. So it's starting to get really toasty outside. And looking at our overnight temperatures on Saturday, we're going to see a low of 74 degrees, 69 degrees on Sunday and Monday. 
On Tuesday, we're going to be at 73 degrees, and we're going to start a, a little steady climb there. On Wednesday, we're going to see a low of 76, 77 on Thursday, and then up to 79 on Friday. I'm not really a huge fan of how toasty it is getting outside. But what I am a huge fan of is Prem 401, our Facebook page, where I can catch the news live every night at 5, even if I'm on the go. So now I'm going to throw it back to the desk with Jerry. Thanks so much, Michael. Have a great night. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. We'll see you on Monday.